From the pages of MikeHuckabee.com, home of the always free Huckabee newsletter, delivered twice daily, right to your email inbox, we're wrapping up a big week in the war against the deep state. President Trump on Tuesday railed against prosecutors in the case against his longtime advisor, Roger Stone, who he said was just one victim of Robert Mueller's sham Russia investigation. Quote, an insult to our country, end quote, is how he put it. Now, you may remember last year when an FBI SWAT team in full combat gear burst onto 67-year-old Roger Stone's home in Florida, all while CNN cameras just happened to be there at 5 in the morning and rolled away. Well, prosecutors say Stone deserves up to nine years. That's right, nine years in prison after his conviction for lying to Congress and witness tampering related to his possible involvement with WikiLeaks and emails purportedly hacked by Russia, of course. Nothing came of that, by the way, and here's another one. If we're going to get people for lying to Congress, what are we gonna to do to Congress when they lie to us? That's a question. Well, after Trump tweeted that the recommended sentencing was excessive, Bill Barr's Justice Department stepped in and prompted all four prosecutors to walk off the case. And right on cue, old friends Shifty Adam Schiff, Jerry Nadler, and crying Chuck Schumer had a collective fit about Trump's comments, with Schumer calling for a formal investigation, indeed. The Three Stooges, still suffering from foam-at-the-mouth-level Trump derangement, still can't get over that they failed to get their nemesis, Donald Trump, tossed out of office. If they got even a week in prison for every whopper they've told in the House and Senate, they'd never see the light of day again. Even better, we'd never have to see them. Now, let's see what you have sent in to my two cents mailbox. Adam in Florida writes this, was the White House dismissal of national security staffer, Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman and U.S. Ambassador to the European Union, Gordon Sondland, fair play? I'm wondering if we saw the president at his most vindictive and wrong last week. No, Adam, you didn't see him at his wrong. The president has a right to pick his team. These people all serve at the pleasure of the president, which means if for any reason, it could be that he didn't like the tie they wore on television. He doesn't have to have a reason. He can let them go. And the reason that that is so important for you to understand is all these people whining about poor Colonel Vindman or poor Ambassador Sondman. These are positions that are selected by the president. He gets to pick who he wants in these positions. And the day he doesn't want them there, he has to give zero explanation as to why he let them go. That's the way it works. I was a governor. It's the way it worked for me as well. My biggest failure was not firing more people and doing it a whole lot sooner. I say of the president, he should have let a lot more people go and he should have done it on day one. So was it fair? That's a subjective term. Was it right and proper? You better believe it was. He has a right to pick his own team, and he certainly has a right not to have people around him who seek to undermine him by leaking information to the press so they can somehow make it appear that they and not the president get to make foreign policy, because they don't. If they want to make foreign policy, they can put their names on the ballot and they can run. Now we get this from Mary in Pennsylvania. She writes, says, back in November, Margot Gaines, a six-year-old girl with Down syndrome, was frustrated in school she pointed her finger at her teacher and said, I shoot you. So her school district called the police on the six-year-old girl. The principal determined that the girl was not a threat in any way, but the school system still called the police for a threat assessment. Are they nuts? What is your assessment as a former public servant is the question. Well, my assessment is that's nuts. Kids sometimes do things like point their fingers. A few years ago, a kid got expelled from school. He was five years old because he chewed his Pop-Tart in the form of what looked like a pistol. I'm not sure I've ever heard of anyone getting injured by a Pop-Tart unless they took it out of the toaster too quickly and it burned their lips. But the kid got expelled from school. We're living in la-la land when schools are punishing children 
for such nonsense. Wake up, America. We can do better. Now, this from Ginger in Wausau, Wisconsin. She sends this in and says the Milwaukee public school teacher, Travis Sarandas, was suspended after tweeting Rush Limbaugh absolutely should have to suffer from cancer. It's awesome that he's dying, and hopefully it will be as quick as it is painful, end quote. And former CNN host Reza Aslan asked if we're not all better off with Rush Limbaugh dead. Travis Sandoros was suspended, and there are calls to fire him. Should he lose his job over a tweet? It's not the tweet for which he should lose his job. It's his insanity. Nobody ought to be in front of a classroom, in front of kids who think that someone dying of cancer is a good thing and is stupid enough to say it out loud and to put it on social media. Would you want that person standing in front of your child and teaching them for six hours a day? What kind of lessons would that teacher give to children? So yeah, he should be fired. And his teaching certificate yanked so he never is in front of children again. And he needs to go back to school himself and learn some basic manners and civility. There are a lot of people in this world I'm not that fond of, but I would never wish for someone, even someone who doesn't like me, I would never wish for them to die from cancer and hope that it's painful. I think I'm a better human being than that. I think you're a better human being than that. And a person who's not at least that good of a human being shouldn't be in a classroom teaching kids. And then for my Twitter page at GovMikeHuckabee, you can subscribe to uh, for the latest news and humor, and please, only if you have a sense of humor. Here's some thoughts on two presidential candidates, one on the rise and one headed out with the tide. Since Mayor Pete is all about the Electoral College being eliminated, yet he gained two more delegates than Bernie, I wonder if he posed the question if he might be up to redistribution of those delegates. I'll bet not. And before that, I mentioned that the tide rolls out. Well, I wonder uh, why that most electable and central, centrist Democrat Joe Biden hooted it out of New Hampshire like he was on the last helicopter ride out of Saigon. His New Hampshire voters were stunned. Maybe he thought that the coronas at his campaign headquarters had something to do with the virus. If all the political fracas is wearing you down, just trying to watch it, imagine how the candidates and the president feel. Well, here's a word of encouragement from Winston Churchill for every politician that feels a little worn down from all the boo birds in Washington. You will never reach your destination if you stop to throw stones at every dog that barks. And until next time, these are the facts of the matter.